This problem asks us to design a common emitter amplifier with a 2N3904 and a 10 volt power supply. The 2N3904 that you need to use has a beta of 300, IS of 10 to the negative 14 amps, and VA equals 100 volts. So we'll double check that the 2N3904 default parameters are correct. IS, VA, and beta, those look good. The input is a function generator and as such has a feminine impedance of 50 ohms, so we've included an R in of 50 ohms. And the output is an oscilloscope and as such has a feminine impedance of 1 mega ohm, so we've included an RL of 1 mega ohm. Part A says to design an amplifier with maximum gain. In order to account for the input and impedance and the output impedance, we need R1 and R2 to be much, much greater, at least 10 times greater than R in. And we need RC to be at least 10 times smaller than RL. Because we're designing for maximum gain, and RC has the most direct effect on the gain, we want to make RC as large as possible while still accounting for this condition. So we'll use 100K. We'll set RC to 100K. And then we're going to just start with 10K for R2. And at the end of this problem, we'll analyze the difference that using different R2 values has on the gain. Um, so now we want to sweep R1 in order to determine what the maximum gain is. So type S and use step param R100K to 200K. That's a good place to begin. And then we're going to use this fancy command, also a spice directive, to give us the different gains at the different resistor values in our step, when we step all of the different values between 100 and 200k. So it's a dot M-E-A-S-T-R-A-N, and then this V out is just the name of the command, we can call it whatever we want. And then PP because we're measuring peak to peak, and then V out 1 is what we're measuring the peak to peak of, so that is important to make the same as the V out 1 of the output that we're measuring. So now we will run this, and we're going to measure V out 1. And then in order to see what the different peak-to-peak -peak measurements are with the different resistor values, we're going to go to View, Spice Error Log, and then down here in Measurement V out, we can look through the peak-to-peaks, peak-to-peak measurements, and 7 is the highest. So up here gives us the resistor values that correspond to the peak-to-peak -peak measurements down below. So we'll count to seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Looks like it's at 160k. So we'll now step from 150 to 170k in order to zoom in and get a more accurate measurement. This is now number 5, so we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 158k, so we'll go from 156 to 160k. Still number 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so we'll go from 157.2 to 158k. Now it looks like it's number 3, 157.36, so we'll go from 157.3 to 57.38. So let's just plug that in here. And then we'll 
comment down or stuck for him. I see. I don't know if that's gonna work. <laughs> there we go. When we measure it here, it tends to be a little different than it gave us in the list of values. So we'll just check that it's still as high as we want it. So we've got 304.2. So we'll just go up one below and one above to make sure that's the highest we can get. Oh, that one's higher. And that one's lower. So we'll call that our maximum gain. Now, I measured this found this maximum gain using a few different resistor values just to see if um, a few different values for R2 just to see if um, increasing R2 gives us more a better gain measurement and we can see here that using larger R1 and R2 values seems to give us a little bit larger gain but not by a lot and as we get to the larger values the change in the amount of gains seems to get smaller so you can play around with some different values and see what um, seems to work best overall. I'm not sure if this is always the case, but it seemed to be the case in this problem. And all of these gains are within 10% of each other, so it looks like um, we would be good using any resistor value that is at least 10 times bigger than R in. So that's it for part A.